All right, I am live and welcome to my second journal club. I'll give you guys a few minutes to jump on. I found an article in the Nephrology Nursing Journal. It is something that the American Nephrology Nursing Association sends you every quarter and it has different journal articles in there that you can read. I chose, so this is from the May, June, 2021 edition, and I chose to read hemolysis as a cause of hemodialysis blood leak alarm, a case study of a patient with fresh water near drowning. Now, let me tell you, oh, I lost my page. One of the reasons why I chose this is it's 1.3 contact hours, education hours, and it's, oh, I thought it was a page long. Maybe I missed, oh. My God, I missed the middle pages when I read it. That's so embarrassing. But I pretty much got the gist of it. All right. All right. This was one, two, three. It's got quite a few authors in there. I'll put the authors and the APA links in the description page. But hemolysis is something that I'm not very familiar with as a dialysis nurse. I don't, doesn't happen very often. But it, when it does happen, you need to know what to do. And one of the main things, and this article points out, is if you do have a hemodialysis blood leak alarm, is you do not rinse the blood back. So first, I'm just going to read the first couple paragraphs, and I'll do it in my best nurse voice. It kind of really gives a lot of good education and good background. That's why I really like these paragraphs. So modern hemodialysis machines are universally equipped with blood leak alarms to protect from intradilytic blood loss or the backflow infusion of dialysate into the circulation across the dialysis membrane. So when we say blood leak alarm, it means that the there is something wrong with the dialyzer. Either this is kind of back from when they did a lot of reuse of the dialyzers. I'm not sure if any of you guys do that in your current clinic, but we use new dialyzers every time. Or maybe there was damage to the dialyzer when you set them up. So maybe it dropped or it came back faulty, but the filters, oh, I should, maybe I'll go walk and get my, get my, my dialyzer, but I, we'll do that in just a second, but there's some kind of damage to it so that the blood, the red blood cells now cross the dialyzer and then go into the dialysate and then go into the waste. And that's bad for a number of reasons. It's no longer sterile. That if it, if blood can, in my opinion, if blood can go one way, it's the dialysate can go the other way. And that's, that's a big deal. You don't want that pure dialysate going into the patient's system. So it's one of the reasons why when you get this blood leak alarm, you do not rinse back that blood. And whenever in doubt, there is a policy on that. So wherever you're working, look up that policy, blood leak alarm, and it'll tell you exactly what to do. Uh, this is something that I didn't know. I didn't really know how the blood leak detector worked in the dialysis machine. So this says that it is a light source and a photo cell receptor, see figure one. I guess it's an okay photo. Dialysate, dialysate. So whenever there's a light and a photocell receptor, so if the dialysate is clear, so here in this one, if the dialysate is clear, the light should reach this photocell receptor. And if something happens to this dialysate, for instance, red blood cells, if this light does not reach this photocell receptor, that is when you're going to alarm. So it's a pretty smart machine. So this, I mean, it can be from red blood cells. It could be because the system's like the detector's dirty or it needs to be clean, but it's definitely something that needs to be maintained. Kind of cool. I didn't know that's how that worked. What else? False alarms for blood leak detector may occur due to air bubbles in the dialysate or obscuring of the photocell receptor due to accumulation of scale or grease as for, as from an accidental fingerprint left when the cell was installed. Okay. All right. So this is the case study. Hemolysis may be, oh, hemolysis may be an infrequent cause of hemodialysis blood leak alarms. We report the case of an unresponsive adult male who was replaced on he, who was placed on hemodialysis with a high flux dialyzer. Within five minutes, the blood leak alarm sounded. The care team discontinued treatment and made two additional attempts to reinitiate hemodialysis with different machines, blood tubing 
blood tubing lots, a brand of high flux dialyzers, which is an important thing. There's high flux and low flux, but continued to receive blood leak alarms. Lab studies were consistent with severe hemolysis. The attending nephrologist ordered continuous, they ordered um, CRT, which was initiated and continued into the following, following day without incident or alarm. The patient later expired from complications of near drown, drowning. In the, event of, in the event of significant hemolysis, CRRT or hemodialysis with low flux dialyzer and a low UF rate may be indicated to help with this hemolysis that's going on. Uh, so from, from what I... What I learned here is hemolysis is, well, I think I knew this. Hemolysis is a potentially dangerous or deadly condition and may cause triggering of the blood leak alarm during high flux hemodialysis if a significant concentration of free hemoglobin is able to pass through the membrane into the dialysate effluent. So that's what caused the alarm. The blood cells were breaking and were able to pass through the, the little things, the, the membranes into the dialysate effluent. Uh, with freshwater near drowning, hemolysis was not originally considered a possible cause of the repeated blood leak alarm. However, in the case of freshwater inhalation, as opposed to drowning in salt water, the low osmolarity of freshwater results in rapid passage across the pulmonary alveoli into the vasculature. So what that means is, you know, that's kind of another way where science and osmosis and ultrafiltration is playing a part in dialysis because there's no salt in there, it, instead of pulling water one way, the water is going to go through osmosis through the lungs into the vasculature. And that causes hemolysis and it's more severe sequelae. Um, so hemolysis should be considered as a potential cause of blood leak alarms, particularly if the patient has any known risk factors. Here, I wish I would have talked a little bit more about what the risk factors are. Um, so that's too bad. Hemolysis is an unusual and infrequent cause of hemodialysis blood leak alarms. One report reviewed the case of an asymptomatic patient with moderate. So in order to confirm hemolysis, you need to take a blood specimen. And I it doesn't really mention what the blood specimen is. So whatever I'm doubt, and I maybe if I just type it into the computer hemolysis, it'll know. But you know, we've all have drawn CMPs or renal function panels where the sample was discarded because of hemolysis. So whenever there's hemolysis, there's going to be elevated potassium levels too. So it's another cause of maybe a false hyperkalemia. Sorry, my lips are super dry. So I, I would just call the lab and be like, I need a test for hemolysis. How do I order that? Minor hemolysis likely occurs in many dialysis treatments and it is not possible to eliminate all erythrocyte injury during dialysis. Hmm. Despite, so I guess there's a higher risk for hemolysis with high flux membranes. because it's, they're bigger. All right, other signs of <clears throat> hemolysis. They may not manifest, they may not ma manifest at all or so the people that have hemolysis may not show all these symptoms, but itching, increased blood pressure and heart rate, flushing, shortness of breath, nausea, abdominal or back pain and diaphoresis. This sounds a lot like a blood transfusion reaction too. In some cases of hemolysis, that dialysate may appear pinkish brown and the blood in the dialysis circuit may appear less opaque and have a bright red color like port wine or cherry soda. Good to know. The other thing that is in part of the, the facility pol policy where I am is we have, um, I really think they're like urine dipsticks, where if we suspect that there is a blood leak in the dialysate, we will grab one of our test strips and we'll 
put it where the venus is so you know you have the blood that goes up and then depending on how your dialysis machine is the blood goes up and then the dialysate goes down so it's concurrent so whatever the opposite way of the blood going is where you'll test for blood in the dialysate and we really just take off the coupling or the hands in hands in and dip it and then see if it comes back positive for blood severe hemolysis can be serious and even fatal High levels of cell lysis cause hyperkalemia, that makes sense, Hypo, hyponatremia, which can lead to seizures, AFib, and AKI. In the dialysis-related cases of hemolysis reported, all five patients had serious symptoms and required hospitalization. That's what I learned about this. So if a patient, so low flux or CRRT if a patient is experiencing hemolysis. Oh, it also kind of mentions that bloodlines should be inspected for kinks before removing them from the machine and the dialysis circuit and samples of dialysate should be retained for further inspection. Interesting. All right, let's go grab my dialyzer that I have that was dropped. I will let's see if it's a high flux or not. All right, let's take a tour. This is my YouTube room where I keep all my YouTube toys. All right, I have a dialyzer in here somewhere. Let's take a look. It's also where we store our Christmas tree. <laughs> okay. All right. These are needles. What else is in here? Ooh, a few dialects. Ooh, I've got a Revitzer 400 and a Revitzer 300. So does it say on here? Maybe it says on the, on the label. Look at it, it says drop, do not use. All right, drop, do not use. This is drop. So it means that there could be a crack and it could cause hemolysis. But I feel like it should see on here if it's a high flux or not. Pretty sure this is a low flux. These two are, but never assume. Do not use if package is damaged or protection caps are not placed. Not a warning, but it doesn't say. This is a little flux, but I guess I just have to look it up. Here it is. This is our dialyzer, Rubber Clear 300, Rubber Clear 400. It's still in my scrubs because I don't feel like changing. Oh man, I'm disappointed it doesn't see on here, and I didn't bring my journal article with me. Let's see what other toys I have in here. Legos. These will probably be used in my video someday. I won these at an arcade. I grabbed them with the claw. Lois and Peter? Can't remember their names, but maybe it might be copyright infringement. Maybe I won't use that. All right, let's bring out some needles. I'm grateful for these expired needles. These are 17 gauge needles. All right, big tubing, clamp, very important, the clamp. Let's see how big this is. Gosh, I've gotten so used to these dialysis needles, I don't even know if these look big anymore, but these are the smaller 17 gauge needles that go 200 to 250 BFR. Oh, let's see what this, these were a gift because they're expired, but oh, that's a pretty cool cap cover. All right, so we've got red and blue. Oh, I wish I could show you guys the difference. The biggest thing I think with the, I'll open another one. So sometimes I get talking and get excited and talk to patients and sometimes I put the needles in backwards, which isn't a big deal, but 
The thing with the arterial needle with the red one is there's that hole there. So we got the bevel up and there's that hole there to kind of help suck the blood a little better. And I'm sure that helps prevent hemolysis where this is the, the venous needle. And there's no hole there, so you can't really see through. Let's see. There you can see the hole, and there's no hole here. Oh, that's easier to see. It's the biggest difference. It just kind of helps with the arterial pressures, I believe. Cool. All right. Well, 15 minutes in, so hemolysis. Wow, I've got, oh, I've got a 14 gauger in here. This one's a white. Oh, I keep clamping these. These are clamped. Let's see if we can see the big difference here. Oh, this one's a little. Hard to see. Definitely a bigger diameter. Let's compare. I've never really compared these before, but this is definitely wider. Looks thicker, but. Weird how you get so jaded with these needles. All right, I'm gonna recap these, okay? So be very careful, Lindsay. Did it. I'm gonna recap this one too. Anything else? Hemolysis, so stop the pump. Check for hemolysis using your test strip. And if it is possible, if it is positive, do not rinse back the blood. Because with hemolysis, there's going to be more potassium in the blood, less sodium, and there's also a risk of contamination with there being a leak in that dialyzer. Maybe I can get Conan to cut this in half and we can look inside. Wouldn't that be fun? Maybe I could. I wonder what else I could do with these. Any ideas? Oh, I must have had, no. That's fine about it thank you guys all for watching i think um we'll do another journal club those are fun i i definitely learn more than i think i will and i can't wait to use what i learned in my future practice so you guys have a good friday and i'll see you next time